Dirtle Magic. Thank you for tuning in to Dirtle Magic. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you like the content you see here today, and leave a like and share the video with someone you might think is interested. Leaving those likes really helps us out, but another way to help us out is by using our TCG Player affiliate link below. If you're looking for singles, sealed product, or gaming accessories, please consider using our link to support the channel. We also have some playmats at inkgaming.com. Go ahead and hit the link in the description to check those out. Alright, let's grab some spells and dirtle with some magic. Hello and welcome back to Dirtle Magic. Today, we're playing Tassiger the Golden Fang, reprinted in the old style of frame, in times for remastered, but new frame over here. Looking at our opening hand, we have four lands, a kill spell and a ramp spell. Could get our commander down too. We have Nihil Spell Bomb for some graveyard removal. Silk Clash Spider to get rid of flyers. I think we can keep this. Our commander is five black for legendary four five human shaman. Delve, each card you exile from your graveyard while casting a spell pays for one generic mana. Two Simic Simic, mill two cards, then return an online card of an opponent's choice from your graveyard to your hand. We do get to go first, we get Glaring Spotlight. Uh, let's go ahead and play a Forest. And I think I want to get down to Glaring Spotlight now, just to see what's going on with our opponents, and we'll pass it off there. Our first opponent is KNT of M, or Caneus Antero of Miletis. Red, green, white, blue, or non-black if you prefer, for a 2-8 human soldier. At the beginning of your end step, draw a card. Each player may put a land card from their hand onto the battlefield, then each player, or sorry, each opponent who didn't draws a card. So they get to both draw and put a land onto the battlefield, we get to pick one or the other. Steam Vents into play tapped for them. Next is Siona, Captain of the Playlias. One green white for Legendary 2 to Human Soldier. When there's the battlefield, look at the top 7 cards of your library. You may reveal an aura card from among them and put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Whenever an aura you control becomes attached to a creature you control, put one one white Human Soldier creature onto the battlefield. Token, by the way. They have a planes followed by a Healer's Hawk. Sundale Hawk, eat your heart out. And next we have Patron of the Katsune. Four white white for a legendary 5-6 spirit, Fox Offering. You may cast this card anytime you cast an instant by sacrificing a fox and paying the difference in mana cost between this and the sacrificed fox. Mana cost includes color. Whenever a creature attacks, you may gain one life. And it's whenever a creature attacks, not just their creatures. So, and the difference between the mana cost is, say I sacrifice a two and white costed fox, then this costs two and white. They have a planes come into play. Going to roll over back to us. We get Soul Manipulation. Let's play Hinto and Harbor, pass it off. No two drops right now. So this deck is inspired by my friend's Tassiger deck. I asked for a list and he gave me a prototype deck list he had when he was first designing it. He said that way I can make it my own because we do have a difference in playstyle. So disclaimer here, but he builds really good budget builds and I'm trying to keep this deck on that same path with cheaper cards. Over to you see on this turn, Leafkin Druid coming down for them. We have an attack of Healer's Hawk, it's off into us. I kind of felt that coming. We'll be taking one. One damage is good, we are down to 39. Siona up to 41. Over to the Patron's turn. Marble Diamond coming down for them. So I have been testing this deck out a bit, made some changes, so this will be probably my first video on it. I just watched the Game Nights episode. I'm hoping that's not going to make people afraid of my Tassiger. Comes our turn, we get a Steve. Let's go ahead and play a Steve but after we play a Twilight Mire. And we'll pass it off there. We can always sacrifice our Steve later to go get a land. Over to KNT. The extra card draw from them should be good for us. Then again, it's going to be good for just about everyone. I do really enjoy that commander because you can build it in a number of different ways. And frankly, the four color Omnath does not much appeal to me over my three color Omnath deck. So if I ever built this color combination, it'd be this or Ink Treader over that Omnath. Timber Crown Pathway into play for the KNT player. Looks like they're just tapping it down and passing it off. Now again, these are great lands for color fixing. I'm never going to say they're not. I just hate having to carry extra cards to run these, so I don't. Not in paper anyway. We have a Selesny Locket coming down for the Zeon player on their turn. Followed by an Oakham Adversary. We have another attack. It's off into the Patron player. Healer's Hawk will deal one damage. Siona will gain one life. Damage is good. Siona up to 42. Patron down to 39. Over to the Patron's turn. Pristine Talisman coming down for them. And in case you hear the jets in the background, I do apologize, but there's nothing I can do about it. 
So we have the Animus also coming down for the Patron. Comes to our turn, we get a split card. Incubation and Incongruity. I think I am just butchered that, but it's removal, basically. Let's go ahead and play an Island. Uh, we could destroy a creature right now, but I don't know that I want to waste the removal just yet. Let's just pass off the turn to our opponents. We still don't have anything just yet. And I want to keep Steve up for now, at least, just to chump something. Over to KNT's turn. Eight cards in hand after the draw. Savannah into play. That means they have colors for their commander. It is their commander coming down to the battlefield. End of the turn. We will choose to draw a card. We have no land cards in hand to put onto the battlefield. KNT has an island come down. We draw an island. It looks like Patron has a planes come down. It looks like Siona drew a card. Oh, I'm sorry. The KNT player had Taiga come down. My mistake. Over to Siona's turn with a Woodland Champion. Okay. Whenever one or more tokens are in the battlefield under your control, put that many 1 1 counters on Woodland Champion. Hmm. Decent synergy there. Wonder how that's going to go down. Also, I want to check something here. I've noticed there's no rares yet for Siona, so I can dig it. Fire Mind Vessel. I always have to give props to people who aren't using rares or mythics as far as I know anyway, because it just makes the game that much harder and that much more challenging. Plus, those decks are much cheaper to build on average. We have an attack on Siona. All right, it's off into KNT, so they're spreading it around. Nice. Uh, isn't there a flying first strike one now? I forget what it is, like Battlefield Hawk or something. Damage is good. KNT down to 39. Siona up to 43. Patron of the Ketsune coming down for that player. All right, so they summon it full on. No, so uh, no sacrificial offering, rather. Whenever a creature attacks, you gain one life. So we aren't creature heavy, but I mean, that alone negates like 1-1 one -one goblins, which usually don't stay 1-1, one -one, but you get the idea. It's an interesting way to kind of fog something, plus you just gain like residual life from the game going on. As long as it's creature-based anyway. Rolls over to our turn, we get back to nature, destroy all enchantments. Unfortunately, not too good right now, but maybe it'll be good later. Let's play an island. Let's go ahead and get down the Silk Lash Spider. Kind of slow roll in this game. We'll pass it off to our opponents. 2K and T. Let's see if we can draw a land off of them. If we don't, I would consider sacrificing Steve at the end of the patron's turn, getting a land, playing it, and then doing our commander. Soul Ring coming down for the KNT player. Heartwood Storyteller. Whenever a player casts a non-creature spell, each of that player's opponents may draw a card. The hugs are like bear hugs at this point. We are going to get a lot of cards potentially. Unfortunately, in our hand, we have a bunch of non-creature spells. So it isn't the best. We may have to kill the Heartwood Storyteller. End of the turn. KNT triggers. We will draw a card. They have Stomping Grounds coming to play. We get Opion Pass. Tapland doesn't really help us here. We'll probably sacrifice Steve at the end of the patron's turn. The patron added planes come into play off the KNT trigger. Siona looks like they drew a card. They also seem to be stuck on the three lanes in the mana rock. The commander doesn't cost that much, but not having you know too much mana isn't the best. Siona, so you know, captain of the play is, is coming down for that player. They'll get to look at the top seven. They do have to reveal an ore if they find it, if they want it, so let's go ahead and take a look. They reveal hope against hope. One one for each creature they control, as long as the chanted creature is human as first strike. That's uh, pretty good for Siona. She is a human, in fact. Hydra's Growth. So 1-1 one, one counter synergies are confirmed. Hardwood Storyteller will also trigger. We'll go ahead and draw a card off of that. The extra card draw is going to be great for the patron of the Katsuni. They have no card draw going on right now, and they're down to two cards in hand. We get the Eldest Reborn. Could be good. Get rid of a few creatures here and there. Don't want to give the game too much to Siona. They are doing fairly well. So I do have some uh, some suspicions going on in my head. Okay, so we have the enchantment Hydra's Growth onto the Woodland Champion. So one one current synergy is there. Token came into play, also triggered the Woodland Champion. Kyo's Hawk is on the attack again. Looks like it's going into K and T. Oh, we have another attack. Kitsune will trigger twice. We'll go ahead and yield to these. So the other attack is off into the patron of the Kitsune player. And this does have Death Touch. So at that point, just take the two. They just gain the two life from the two attacking creatures. Basically fogs the thing. It's an interesting ability that I don't think gets enough credit. I mean, yeah, it's not a strong ability. 
But if you're playing a life gain matters deck, which seems to be something white does a little bit more of these days, could be a good strategy as long as you keep it online. Patron back down to 41. Damage is good against KNT for one. Siona up to 44. Sword of the Animist onto the Patron. Followed by Mind's Eye. Classic draw for white, basically, these days. Used to run it myself. We will draw a card off this Heartwood Story Tower trigger. It is Arcane Denial. Followed by Authority of the Consuls. We will get to draw yet another card. We will do so. Nine cards in hand now. We did get a Forest. Three Mind's Eye triggers for the Patron. Unfortunately, they do have to pay one to draw that card, which makes Mind's Eye not the best, but it's still pretty good. Unfortunately, they have no man to pay for it. Patron of the Katsune on the attack. It will trigger twice. They will gain one life and go get a land to the battlefield tapped. And they are attacking off into us. That's unfortunate. Let's block with the Steve. And then we will sacrifice the Steve. Looks like we're going to need a swamp. Let's go ahead and get that. No damage to us. Comes our turn. Mind's Eye will trigger. We'll yield to this. It's going to be happening a lot. We also get Rashmi Eternity's Crafter. That could be very good for us. Let's play a forest. Because Yona depends on enchantments, perhaps, I do want to save the back to nature. So, do we want to get down our commander right now? We do have nine cards at hand. We need to get rid of some stuff. So I'm thinking... Probably rash me with Nihil Spellbomb. Just get that kind of stuff out of the way. Keep up mana for the Arcane Denial. She will come into play tapped. Patron will gain a life. We'll also yield to this trigger. Play Nihil Spellbomb. Heartwood Story Tarot will trigger. Our opponents will be able to draw a card. That is unfortunate. And we'll pass the turn there. Keeping up that mana for either Back to Nature if something really heavy goes down, or Arcane Denial. We have Fractured Identity. Oh, man. Where is it going, though? Oh, it's going on to KNT. We each get a KNT. And then they can just resummon their commander. So Fractured Identity is one of my favorite removal spells because of the shenanigans you can do with it. Especially if you have a Phage the Untouchable. Then everybody just dies and you win the game. We will draw a card. Things are about to get way out of hand. Um, do I want to counter that, though? I kind of want to be amused. On the other hand, I don't know that I want this to happen. I think I'm going to counter it just because I don't want the board state to be all weird and crazy. We have a couple of triggers. Everybody else will get to draw a card. We get Rashmi trigger. We technically get to draw a card. We get Nemenic Wall. I don't know if I pronounced that, but it helps us recur our instants and sorceries. We get Return to Nature, destroying an enchantment. It's going to destroy Authority of the Consuls. Yeah, I figured that'd go away eventually. That's why I didn't want to waste the backs to basics just yet. Yeah, sure, let's draw a bunch of cards. more cards we pitch to the graveyard, the cheaper Tassiger is. We get Death Reap Ritual. More card draw. Always good. Authority of the Consuls goes the bye-bye. Fractured Identity gets countered. Braids Conjure Adept. I was just thinking this would be hilarious in KNT. Uh, not too good for us, though, considering we don't have really anything we can put into play. So in case you're unfamiliar with Braids, the blue one anyway, at the beginning of each play's upkeep, that player may put an artifact creature, a land card from their hand onto the battlefield, straight up for free, no strings attached. It's an interesting card, it's a card I admire, however, it doesn't really help us do anything. To the end of the turn, we'll go ahead and play a land, just so I don't have to discard so much later. Let's play an Opulent Palace. There we go. Do the clamp step. Canty will have to discard some cards. Siona at nine cards in hand. The patron up to six cards in hand now. Mind's Eye working out for him, at least eventually. They still haven't been able to pay for anything on it, but the Heartwood Storyteller is really paying dividends for them. To the next player's turn, we'll get to draw a card off Arcane Denial. Canty will get to draw two cards. Braids will trigger for the Siona player. I'm not looking too forward to that. And Hydra's Growth will trigger. We have Archon of Falling Stars. When it dies, you may return target enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So that was the creature that Tiana put into play off the Braids trigger. In response to more Arcane Denial triggers, we have Omen of the Sun. It does flash when it is the battlefield. Create two 1-1 white human soldier creature tokens, and you gain two life. 
we will go ahead and draw a card. Don't want to go too far past nine. We get Tolerant Sky Summoner. That's something I'm trying out in the deck. So we'll see how Tauron does. Woodland Champion will trigger again. Tokens everywhere. We draw the Mending of Dominaria. So it does help us self-mill a little bit and can bring all of our lands back in case we start pitching them. The Woodland Champion also becomes a 10-10. That's pretty scary. All it needs is Trample to get even scarier. I think we're going to have to just kill that off the table. Hayat's Pilgrim, search your library for an aura card. I do like that they kind of put that on a creature. I think that's something white should be able to get more of generally. Uh, they do have it, but just a straight enchantment would be good without it costing six mana. Maybe four just so it can dodge Sun Titan abuse. That might be good, but six mana I always thought was a little bit much. A vow of Wildness. Going on to the patron. So it can't attack them, and it gets trample. Uh-oh. Uh, we will decline to draw a card this time. I don't want to draw too much off the deck and not be able to play it. However, it looks like if we, you know, don't get smacked for, you know, 10 this next turn anyway, that back to nature is something we're going to need to be doing. <laughs> we have attacks out of Siona. After some triggers clear, let's see where they're going. I'm really hoping the 10 not coming at us. Yeah, it is. I kind of figured. Ted face. The elf is going off into the patron player. The hawk off into the KNT player. So they will be able to draw a card. Let's go to blocks and uh, block with the spider. Too bad, too. This is like my favorite spider in all of magic. Yeah, there it goes. Damage is good. We did absorb all of it with the spider, though. The creature did not have trample. They draw a card off the patron damage. So, Patron down to 45, KNT down to 37, Siona up to 47. Over to the Patron's turn. Eight cards in hand to begin the turn with. They will draw a ninth one. However, they won't be able to play it with Braids. Braids triggers on the upkeep, so let's see what they're doing. Oh, it's a Sunscorch region. Oh, dear. Well, okay then. A somewhat underrated card. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, they gain life and put a counter on the Sunscorch region. It can get very big. Angelic Accord also coming down for the patron player. See, there's that life gain matter stuff. I guess we'll draw a card here. Okay, an island. So, we do have lands coming down. We can play Tarn for free, get down some fine defenders. I think we're going to get down the Eldest Reborn, and then start going for some removal because things are starting to get a little bit out of hand. I love KNT decks, but man, are they hard to overcome if your opponents are the problem. Well, I mean the other opponents. Can't he's real good at making everyone else look super scary. So I do believe the patron has to attack. It is goaded, correct? Uh, no, it is not goaded. It just has to attack, not the controller of the enchantment. So we do have a few triggers. They'll gain one life and get a land. It is coming at us. That is unfortunate. Also saw that coming, but nothing we can do. Down to 30 we'll go. The damage is good. Let's see if they do anything during the second main phase. They do not. Going to roll over to us. Let's see what we get. Braids will trigger. Let's put down Tallrend. The Eldest Reborn. We have a number of triggers going off. Okay, now before all this resolves, I do want to play Back to Nature so we don't destroy the Eldest Reborn, but we destroy all the other enchantments. And there we go. Might consider removing the uh, Siona's Graveyard, though. Rash will trigger. We get Drowned Catacomb. That's too bad. The Eldest Reborn comes into play and triggers. Each opponent will have to sacrifice a creature. KNT gets sacrificed. Patron of the Orochi gets sacrificed. Archon of Falling Stars gets sacrificed. I think here we'll respond with the Nihil Spell Bomb. We have a couple of triggers. We will not pay to draw a card. We have a lot of cards in hand. Archon will go to trigger, but it will have no legal targets. And that's it. Let's pass it off to our opponents. We do have to discard. We'll discard the Island and the Death Reap Ritual. Uh, that way, I mean, <laughs> there's plenty of card draw. I don't think we're going to need it. 2k and T's turn. Braids will trigger. We have an Avatar of Slaughter. Oh, being just before them is not good for that at all. So this basically just says creatures attack each combat fable and they all have double strike and we have some of the weakest creatures on board. Oh, this is going to be super bad. We don't have enough mana to counter or kill it either. And we don't have enough mana to activate the glaring spotlight in case they want Alpha Strike on someone else. So that's not my favorite. We have our can signet coming down for the can T player as well. We'll get to draw a card though. Maybe find an answer if we survive the turn. We get Acidic Slime. Mm, not the best at the moment, but it does have Death Touch. And considering everything, we'll get Double Strike. 
that kind of works out because then we can still block and kill whatever attacks us, even the 1010 over there. Divine Gambit. Now that's a card I didn't think I'd see ever in a deck. So, exile target artifact creature or enchantment. They are going after the mind's eye. The player may put a permanent card from their hand onto the battlefield. Okay, very groups huggy. Yeah, all right, that works. Flavor on. We'll get to draw yet another card, and I think we're going to take it. We get Biomancer's Familiar. That's mostly in the deck for Tassiger, because then his ability just costs Simic Simic. Divine Gambit goes off. Let's see what they're going to put into play. Oh, Mages of the Moat. Well, there you go. Creatures without flying can't attack. So that might be good for us too. I mean, there's what, the Hawk? And that's it? Oh, roll reversal. They're going to switch up the Flying Dragon and Braids. Well, I have to say, this is probably the most interesting KNT deck I've seen in a bit. Oh, we have Swords to Plowshares to targeting the Braids. Nice. Well, there you go. And we'll get to draw two more cards off of it. At this point, I don't see why not. We have to keep up with everyone else. Still looking for some mass removal, too. I mean, yes, we did back to basics, but I mean like Gaze of Granite or the fine or the finality part of Find and Finality. Braids gets exiled. So that, for that first draw, we got Forest. The second draw, we got Sunken Ruins. So at least we're getting some lands out of the way. Probably want to get down maybe the Mending of Dominaria pretty soon. All right, so important to note, Roll Reversal fizzles because it does not have the two targets at resolution. So they get to keep their dragon over there. Which is very good for them because it's a 9-8 that keeps getting larger and can attack. The only other thing able to attack is our Drake or the little baby hawk over there. We have Gaia's Blessing. I didn't expect to see that one either. KNT's like my favorite deck at the table right now. You know, besides our own, obviously. Let's go ahead and draw another card. Sure, why not? I'm just hoping they don't have something like Psychic Spiral and then they just mill somebody out. That'd be a bit interesting. We get another land. Okay, so we are getting through a land block. That's nice. They just shoveled a bunch of cards back into their deck, including Roll Reversal. That's it for KNT there. Passing it off after tapping down the last of their mana. Let's see what Siona can do with uh, possibly 16 cards in hand. Drop some creatures, play some enchantments. They're still low on mana, considering. It's going to be an interesting turn. They do have the largest army on the battlefield. They can't attack with anything except the Hawk. They could potentially enchant something to give it flying. Destiny Spinner. I love this card on paper. I've never really had the chance to use the ability otherwise, though. We will have to keep an eye out for that ability, though, because it says their stuff can't be countered, and we do run an assortment of counter spells. Paul and Bright Wings. Yeah, that'll give it flying. It also gives it whenever it deals common damage to a player. Create that main one with Sapperlings from Ravnica 1. I like the art on it, although I don't know how Selesnian it is. Back then, the guilds weren't as statically their guild, you know? They did different things. We'll go ahead and draw another card. We get Unwind. That could be good later. Just can't counter enchantments of creatures on Siona's side, though. Have to remember that. And Sunscorch Regent keeps getting larger. It's a 12-11. Yeah, it's flying, so it can attack. It has Double Strike because of the Avatar. That's 24 damage if it gets through. But you can. We have a creature token into play. Woodland Champion will trigger. All right, so their 10-10 now has Fog and Double Strike as well. Sorry, N11-11. Hope against Hope. We'll get to draw yet another card. Let's go ahead and do it. I'm really hoping we get some kind of removal or counter magic. Oh, we do. We get Unravel the Ether. That could be very good right now. Hope against Hope. Let's see it again. 1-1, one, one, and as, as long as it's human, it has First Strike, which right now doesn't matter. So what do we want to do here? Yeah, let's go ahead and take away that flying ability. We have a couple of triggers. Everybody's gonna draw a bunch of cards, although we might be able to cast something. We'll also get a Drake for defense, that works for me. We draw a forest. Unravel the Aether, Aether, the magics. It makes Palm Bright Wings get shuffled back into their library. Or into place, Yona will trigger. They'll get yet another human soldier creature token, and that means Woodland Champion triggers again. So it is a 24-24 with double strike. Luckily, you can't attack because of moat. Yeah, I think Curse of the Swine next turn is probably going to be something I'm going to need to cast. We have an attack. It's off into the KNT player. It's Healer's Hawk. Damage is good. KNT taking one and then one damage. They're down to 37. Siona up to 49. Over to the patron's turn. 18 cards in hand after the draw. 
Still have Moat, and we still have a Double Striking 14-13 Flyer. And they have 11 mana, sorry, they have 13 mana otherwise. Atherfuck's Reservoir. Oh, dear God. Okay, well, um, hmm. So, that's scary. We will go ahead and draw a card. We get Balgad Recovery. Okay, could be good. Unravel the Aether could be good there. We do have Acidic Slime. Could put that down. Could also be one shot by an Aetherflux. That's a thing. We have an attack. It's off into us. Sadness. We'll block with the Drake. Damage is good. Our Drake gets to become a snack. They do not gain any life. Thankfully, the Dragon itself does not have life link. However, they can still pay the 50 life to one shot somebody. It would put them in a really dangerous predicament, though. Mana Vault coming down during the second main phase for the patron player. But as I was saying, so I think destroying the Aetherfux Reservoir is our best chance right now. We'll go ahead and draw a card. Sir Conrad the Grim. You don't say. Unfortunately, Curse of the Swine will exile, so it won't trigger a bunch. But libraries are getting lower on cards. We could potentially do something with that. Aetherfux triggered. The patron player will gain some life. Mana Vault into play. Sensei's Divining Top. A number of other triggers. I think we're going to start declining some of this card draw. I mean, we have 16 cards in hand and we'll just have to discard them all. We can get down Tassiger for basically just black at the moment. Arcane Signet coming down. They're getting a lot of life off the Aetherflux Reservoir triggers. So, I hope they're not going to cast a bunch of small stuff. I mean, they would still need 100 plus life to take out two opponents. So it is a really high cost and it is hard to get there. A lot of their life gain has been shut down because their commander's dead, but they could also just resummon that commander, get rid of their moat thing, force everyone to attack, and maybe have a fog up. They do have a pretty decent pathway to victory just on these cards alone. Dranith Magistrate. Ooh. Patron up to 67 life, now up to 72, so they've played five cards this turn. Dranith Magistrate. Well, I guess we're not casting Tassiger, but it's going to become a piggy for sure. That's a white card I do like. But because it affects Commander specifically, I don't run it. Oh, KNT just straight up quits the game. Okay, so none of us have Double Strike anymore. That's nice. We still can't attack unless we have Flyers, though. Everflowing Chalice kicked one time, coming down for the Patron player. And Danath Magistrate. Like I was saying, it's a card I choose not to use. If you use it, that's cool and whatever. Just be aware. Oh, a Fumigate. They are going to gain a lot of life. Okay, but it does take care of the dragon problem for us, and we still can get rid of the Aetherfux Reservoir. However, now that KNT is gone, oh, and they can just kill us. <laughs> Dang it, I was going to say, because KNT is gone, our chances of survival are really, really slim. But there it is. Yep. And we go down. We're the first to be blasted. All right, good game to our opponent. Mono white life gain. It's getting better. And apparently this person put Loth onto it. The other player just gives it straight up. I'm going to give it to the mono white player. Man, that game was kind of nuts. I really enjoyed it. All right, four points to the winner. Yeah, not even mad about that. That was that was just a fun, crazy game. Nothing like stupid though, so I can really appreciate that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the deck. There are some things I think I might want to change already. Okay, here's the deck. We did get a lot of stuff. Just couldn't play a lot. That game was just nuts. Absolutely nuts. Enjoyable though, like I keep saying. So we do have some mass removal in Curse of the Swine and Gaze of Grant. We also have Find and Finality. I have a love-hate relationship with the card, but I like it enough to include it in a lot of decks just to have a more casual kind of board wipe. Plus it has Recursion on it, which in this deck is pretty good, especially if we're going to be milling ourselves a bit. I also have a card I'm testing out in the deck called Titan's Nest. It's from Ikoria. It basically gives all of our stuff delve as long as it's not an X spell, so Gaze of Grant and Curse of the Swine aren't in there. And it has to be one or more colors, so... Yeah, no, no uh, Stone Coil, Serpent, or any of that stuff. But it's kind of like giving Delve to the rest of the deck. Plus, we get to self-mill at the beginning of our upkeep for one. So, testing it out. I don't know if it's strong enough with the synergies to be in this deck. And it might be a Nobo because we just want to Delve out our Commander, maybe. But we'll see. It also helps with that card selection if he gets to get going. Other than that, I am just trying out a bunch of different stuff in the deck right now. I added Kolga, for instance, because Tassiger is a human, and this is a personal favorite card of mine, just because, one, it's super cheap to pick up money-wise, and two, it's King Kong, and it goes and attacks people and punches their enchantment in the face. Plus, you can save your commander if it's a human, so 
that works. And he gains indestructible. I mean, it's a decent card. A lot of abilities, but it's still very simplistic too. Removal, removal, save something, save itself. It works out. Anyway, here's the deck. Going to work on it a little bit. I want to get rid of some of the four drops and some of the five drops and get some other stuff down there, especially maybe a Simic Charm or Heroic Intervention, depending on the price they are currently. I am trying to stay true to the my friend's vision for the deck, which to keep, is to keep it each card, I think, like under $2 or so. Some of the cards have gone up in price, and I haven't looked at all the prices on the cards yet, so it'll probably be more expensive than my friend's version at the end of all things, but... I'm going to try that, but I do think we need some like extra protection for ourselves. Maybe some fog effects. I don't know. Go and test it some more. Anyway, if you saw any cards in this video, you want to purchase for yourself in paper. Sealed product coming up. Time Spiral Remastered is coming out, and then we're going to be having Strixhaven, which I'm very psyched about. I want to pre-order that so bad, but Wizards is doing things I don't trust. Or, uh, sorry, I got a little off track there. Or sleeves you want to purchase to protect all that stuff. Please consider using the TCG Player affiliate link in the description below for the channel. It helps us out and doesn't cost you anything extra. All right, on to the next game, Atassiger. I'm rather, I haven't ever actually played this commander before. I'm rather enjoying it so far. We'll see how it goes and what decks we come up against. I wouldn't mind another crazy game like that, though. It seemed, it was, again, a lot of fun. Again, good game to our opponents. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you for the next video.